So uh, I don't know how many of you know a little bit about what we do, but my name's Dion Laszlo Baker. And I didn't think two years ago that I would be here talking to you about how we make tea pops. When I trained, I spent the, la the last kind of few years of my training kind of wondering, what am I going to do? What, am I, what do I want to do after I finish? And my husband said something to me really important. I don't think he realized how critical it was. He said, Dion, you know, you don't have to work. When you're working, it's because you want to work. So you better think about it and you better be passionate about what you do. And I don't think he realized that those few little words meant so much to me and it's really guided my decisions into what I've done since that time. And when I finished, I, my, the area that I specialized in was, is called maternal fetal toxicology. And that's the effects of exposure to drugs and chemicals in our environment on fetal development. And we tested children at the Hospital for Sick Kids in Toronto. We tested them after their mother, mothers had called our facility, called Mother Risk, about safety of exposure to organic solvents in their workplace. Women who worked in hair salons, nail salons, um, medical laboratories, dry cleaning. And they, they wanted to know how safe is it during their pregnancy. And at the time they called, we couldn't tell them how safe it was. It was unknown. And there were guidelines. Most of the women tried to stay in those guidelines. And we asked them at that time, can we call you when your kids are a few years old and have a look at your kids, bring them in, so that we can inform other moms and dads and, and doctors out there about the safety of exposure so we can learn something from this. And we followed up those moms and their kids tested them and discovered that even though these women who actually took the time to call in, they were all trying to protect themselves. They were all within legal limits according to the government. And we found that they were statistically significantly lower. There was, their children were still in the normal range, but they were lower in functioning in a number of areas. Despite the fact that these moms, they were the upper echelon of those moms who would have been calling in because they took the time to actually call in. So they were aware that there might be something going on. So you can imagine those moms who didn't call in or the moms who are, might be abusing solvents and, and the effects that can happen. So just because the government says something is safe and it's okay, you know, you can't trust that that's the truth. And really, you need to look at the science behind, behind so many things. So, you know, I kind of say that my background serendipitously led me to where I am today. Again, I said that I never in a million years would have thought I'd be standing here talking about a food product because I was kind of aiming for being a professor, possibly working, doing research with my husband, um, consulting people in his practice, something like that. But here I am, two years after my two little boys came up with an idea that I couldn't let go. I was in the kitchen with Joshua, who is my, the eldest son on your right, or your left, sorry, and David, who's my youngest son. They were in the kitchen. David hasn't eaten any refined sugar, coloring, flavoring, anything artificial um, since he was about three. So at that time he was eight years old. And he, interestingly, loves stuff that most kids don't eat. Tomatoes, mushrooms, scallops, mussels, anything, you name it, and he loves it if it's from the earth. In fact, when he was little, we told him that um, this is how athletes train. This is how Olympians train. They eat from the earth. They eat pure because we wanted to give him the biggest shot in life to succeed and to not kind of face some of the challenges he was facing. And so, you know, when the Olympics came in 2010, he said to me, he said, I said, you know, honey, we've got tickets to the Olympics. And he said, well, I'm, I'm in the Olympics because he had thought he was training for the Olympics. So he's a young man, probably one of the healthiest people I know on earth. He's athletic, he's incredible, and it's something that I wish we had even started with Josh, because he kind of has that typical diet, probably healthier than a lot of kids, but it's quite amazing when you take those things that we don't need out of your diet and what can, what can happen. So we were in the kitchen. Uh, David was making tea. Joshua was making frozen novelties, popsicles, and... They were arguing over who was going to do what with mommy, which happens a lot in my house. And Joshua said, Mommy, I want to make teasicles. And I thought, what a good idea. I'd never heard of a teasicle or a tea-based frozen treat. And I just kind of couldn't let it go. So I went to the computer to see if anybody in the world was doing this. And I don't think my kids realized at that time, from that day forward, our lives changed a lot. And I realized no one was doing this, but I had to find out, you know, I know a lot about tea, and I 
hear a lot about how healthy tea is. I know it's the second highest consumed beverage in the world after water. I know it's a growing industry. I know it's very peaceful and relaxing and I enjoy drinking it. But what's the science? What is the true science behind tea? And what, why is it so healthy? What is it about it? And, and I know that there's so much on the internet, but what's the scientific uh, research community doing with tea? So first of all, I don't know if, if you know this, but all tea comes from the Camellia sinensis, sinensis plant. It's all from the same species. And then depending on which um, tea it is, it's harvested slightly differently. My favorite tea actually is organic white tea. And, the, and organic white tea, um, or white tea, is plucked the youngest leaf from the top of the, the Camellia sinensis plant. And it's plucked and it's and, uh, taken off and, and processed the least. So it's the least of the uh, oxidized or fermented of the plants. So Canadians drink about 10 billion cups of tea a year. And as we get started and more into this discussion, I'm going to talk about organic versus non-organic tea and our decision to only use organic tea in our home and also in all of our products. So the health benefits. When I started looking into the health benefits of tea, I was absolutely floored. I, I couldn't believe the science behind tea. You know, when you look up something, you tend to find a few things. It was, I, I, I kind of felt like I, I was in shock that, that there could be so many health benefits associated with tea and hard science behind a lot of it. Um, tea has been in, uh, studied in the, in the aid and prevention of neurodegenerative diseases. My father has Parkinson's disease, and I keep trying to supply them with more and more tea, insisting that he drink tea. He doesn't believe me because I'm his daughter, but... You know, eventually when it comes out, you know, I send him a piece of uh, a literature and he says, oh, maybe I will try it. Um, and uh, big areas of research are in cancer prevention and cardiovascular disease, osteoporosis, improvement in cardi uh, cognitive functioning, arthritis, bone density in women, and weight loss. But, you know, when we decided, when I thought about if I'm going to start a company, I also need to, to have a, a tea or a herbal tea that has no caffeine, because obviously that's important to a lot of people that they don't have the caffeine. So I started researching one of my favorite herbal infusions, which is rooibos, and I was uh, really surprised to find out that it's part of the legume family, and it's only grown in the uh, Western Cape in South Africa. So what's so special about tea and rooibos that, I, that really caught my eye? It's the antioxidants. Antioxidants actually protect our cells from oxidative stress. You can imagine if you take a car and you put it outside and you don't do anything to it, slowly it's going to oxidize from the, in, from the outside in. It's going to rust, and that's the same kind of stress that happens in our bodies. So tea, is a, because it contains antioxidants, it's a free radical scavenger. And just a side note, green and white tea contain catechins. Certain catechins in those teas are now being tested not only in the prevention of cancer, but actually in the treatment of cancer, which was one of the most surprising pieces of research that I found. The other thing is, you know, antioxidant power players. I would have thought, okay, you know, fruits, tea, probably high up there. The biggest one is rooibos. Rooibos has five times the amount of antioxidants than tea, and tea has about 10 times the amount of antioxidants that fruit and vegetables do. Now, of course, there's other important um, minerals and vitamins that we get from, from fruit and, and vegetables, so by no means should you not, not, not be consuming those because they're super healthy. But tea ha contains an incredible amount of antioxidants. And I don't know if, if you know what free radicals are. A lot of us hear free radicals, what are they? Um, so they are basically a byproduct of the oxidation process that happens in our bodies and they can be triggered by poor diet, by pollution, by UV rays that we get from, from the sun, um, by chemical exposures, anything that kind of puts a stress on our body. And the danger is that they can interact with our DNA and our cell membranes, and they can make those cells dysfunctional or die. And when I, in my research, I looked at epigenetics, and epigenetics is, a, is an area that's really growing, and that means that not, it's not necessarily genetics per se, but it's the vulnerability. So you may have two people exposed to the exact same thing at the same moment in the same quantity, but because of epigenetics, which is their vulnerability to dysfunction from that exposure is part of their epigenetic makeup or it can even come as an insult 
in my, in my case, when looking at solvents, it actually affected people in different ways and would change their DNA. So that's starting to explain why some people have more damage to their DNA in their cells and why some people don't. So that's a, a really growing area. And these factors that, that, that really degrade our cells are implicated in, in diseases such as cancer and heart disease, which is why the antioxidants are being studied so, so strongly in those areas. So rooibos, very similar health benefits. Again, cancer, anti-inflammatory, antiviral. There's a study that actually showed that uh, dental health in children is improved uh, when they consume rooibos tea. Beneficial for the skin and it can relieve menopausal system, uh, symptoms and stress. And this was an interesting quote that I found by Dr. John uh, Weisberger, who's a senior researcher for, from the Institute for Cancer Prevention in New York. I've published more than 500 papers, including a hell of a lot on tea. Antioxidant power is astounding. He drinks 10 cups of tea a day. So I've got all this information. What am I gonna do? Am I going to change my career? Am I going to give up what I was trained to do and go out on a whim and start a company making tea-based popsicles, tea pops? Or am I going to kind of think, ah, good idea, I'm going to let somebody do it and I'm going to kick myself when I see somebody succeeding in this area? Well, I guess you can figure out that I decided to go for it and take the leap. And it was, I must say, a scary time because I retired from what I was doing. I invested a lot of my time, a lot of my passion in developing a company. And I had to think long and hard about those things that were important to me. And they have impacted every single one of these areas. In fact, in fact, I don't see friends anymore. The only time I get to socialize is if they want to come for a speed walk. So that's my social time, is from drop-off time for an hour, speed walk with me. And that's, that's it right now. So if I was going to start a company, I decided this had to be meaningful for me. This had to mean something deep to me. This had to be something that I could teach my children about. This had to be something that I could do something really good with. This is Marianne. Marianne, we've sponsored Marianne's sister, and then Marianne, she was our nanny, and she worked with me in the kitchen testing lots and lots and lots and lots of tea. Discovered with me that if you freeze tea, it turns into an ice cube with no flavor that you actually have to put something solid in there, that you actually have to put massive amount of tea, so you're actually getting a higher antioxidant level because you lose 70% of taste when you freeze something. She's now one of my head of production in our facility. And there's my son, David. And he's the little guy that we took off sugar and refined sugar and all, that, all the artificial stuff. And he loves nature. And he loves, he's an incredible photographer. And for me, there had to be something environmental in this. What can I do that's going to benefit the environment, that's going to benefit my kids? So all this thinking went into the development of this company. I, had to, I did a lot of research, as you can tell. And then I started to think about building a team. And just like Stacy, for me, it's not about the education somebody has, but it's about their personality, their integrity, their honesty, their values, their outlook on life, their outlook on, on becoming part of a team, their passion. And I've told every single person who's joined our team, if at any time you don't feel passionate about what you're doing here, tell me, talk to me, just let me know because we'll change it. If you're super passionate about something and you want to grow a certain area, tell me. We'll grow that area, because I really feel that that's the most important thing in life that you should, again, back to my husband, you should feel that passion. Sourcing ingredients for us has been extremely challenging. You know, if you try to find uh, coconut milk that is organic, non-GMO, kosher, vegan, and certified peanut-free, good luck with that, there's one source. <laughs> It's very, very hard. And again, I'm going to talk to Stacy about possibly trying to tie in with him in bringing something over directly from the Philippines if we can, because it's incredibly challenging. Finances, we've just put a third mortgage on our house, and we decided to self-fund and, and build this on our own as much as humanly possible. So our kids um, have learned to sacrifice a little bit. And I actually feel proud because I felt that our kids, I, we lived a pretty, pretty nice posh life. My husband is a surgeon. We went and did lots of nice things. We still do. I still drive the nice car I had back then, but we don't go out for dinner very much. We don't buy the toys. We don't buy much of anything. And the kids have learned that, you know what? When you're building something and you've got to put the time in and you've got to put the money in, there's a little bit of sacrifice, but that's part of life. And I'm really glad that's one of the key things that I think my kids have learned and I've discovered how spoiled they were before we engaged in all this. 
time. Time has been crazy. I'm probably still working anywhere from a 12 to 15 hour day on a typical day. It's a lot. So June 2012, we're going. We're going for it. Our goal is to take our kids' little idea to make a tasty treat, because for me, taste is huge. I don't know how many tasty treats I've tried that are supposed to be healthy that I couldn't actually swallow. <laughs> so for me, taste was a big, big, big thing. That it's good for the earth, and it can be eaten by anyone. Any allergen, any issue, anybody can eat it. And it's all, we don't use any refined sugar. We use coconut flower blossom nectar, which is the nectar from the flower in the coconut tree. It's not actually from the coconut itself. It's from the, from the flower. And all of our teapots are between 7 and 9 grams of naturally occurring sugars. So even diabetics can have them, depending on the severity of their diabetes. So I challenged myself when I set out to start DBs, which actually, by the way, stands for either David Baker or Dion Baker, to create a brand. And we worked with Trapeze Communications, which is a local company. And I said to them, you know what? Brand is so critical. That's so important. Somebody, I know for myself when I'm walking in a store, something that catches my eye, something that speaks exactly what this company is about is going to draw me. And so I said to them, you know what? I know what I don't know. And I know I don't know graphic design. I want you to be creative. Use your skills. Make it scream tea. Make it scream organic fun and just be creative. And they came up with stuff that I am so proud of. I cried, I think, the first time I saw some of the work that they had done because I am so proud of what they've created. And I think that's just giving that liberty and admitting when you know you don't know something and giving that opportunity to the other person who's so skilled in that area to do what, they, what they're good at. Our biggest testing community was the most honest people on earth, kids. If they don't like it, it's going in the garbage or it's dropping on the floor or they're going don't like it. And so we would invite tons and tons and tons of kids over. I got to socialize a little bit with the parents. And, and we'd watch them and watch their re reaction. And it was a big evolution because, you know, it's pretty hard to take a product that loses 70% of its taste. It's got organic ingredients, so it's got a massive amount of tea, a massive amount of fruit, which is very expensive. Um, but it's hard to get the taste out. And we, if you'll, you'll be shocked if you go and you, you turn a box over, which is what we're encouraging people to do. Almost everything has got organic flavor, natural flavor, natural color. Well, do a little research and find out what natural flavors and natural colors are. You won't want to eat them again. It's pretty disgusting. But it's hard to get away from. So anyway, that was our biggest challenge, was really to get the taste up. We ended up hiring food scientists to help to really get the taste up. They kept insisting, you're going to have to add flavoring. You're going to have to add salt to boost the flavor. And I said, no, we're not adding salt. No, we're not adding flavoring. This is a challenge, a personal challenge to myself. People have said to me, why don't you go on Dragon's Den? I probably got asked that every day. And I say, because it's, it's a personal challenge to myself. Can I do this from the teeniest little idea and make something big from myself, all on my own, and, and just make it happen? Not because I got onto this TV show and tried to convince them that this is a good idea. Something just feels not right for me. It was about kind of taking this idea and taking it fully onto fruition. And so this is a little baby of a friend of ours. And again, babies are even more honest than little kids because they won't, I mean, you couldn't, you couldn't yank it away from her mouth. She just sucked on that thing and just wouldn't let it go. So that was when we felt like we're, we're getting somewhere, there, somewhere with taste. So last year, about a year ago right now, we decided we're going to send our product into the world tea media, the leading media uh, in the tea world. These were, uh, there were submissions from around the globe, and we won Best New Product. So we realized, oh my gosh, we're on to something. This is real. We really are the only people doing this. So that was an exciting moment. Then last summer, we went off to New York City with um, Agriculture Canada, and we went to the fancy food show. We set up a booth and we thought, you know, we're just going to see what the response is in North America. I'm kind of a person that doesn't do things in a small way, which is sometimes good and sometimes a little unfortunate because I'm pretty driven and really wanted to go big and see what, like, what is the response? Am I, am I on the right track here? It was absolute insanity. The first day, we gave out 1,400 teapops. We barely had any left. We had, that's when Good Morning America came, the Wall Street Journal, the head buyer from Whole Foods Markets uh, Global in Texas. And I kind of looked at Milan 
who's one of my key associates who was my personal trainer and is now my right-hand woman. And I said, oh my God, I can go home now and I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish. This is so exciting. And it was a really, really, really thrilling moment. Since then, we've, we've been blessed with all sorts of nominations. And in fact, right now, we, just, we were notified a few weeks ago that we're up for the um, Reader's Choice Award for Favorite New Product of 2013-2014. So that was a huge thing. Um, and so we're actually, that's, now we were nominated, it's now up to voting. And so now we're, we're actually in first place, which has been great. So if any of you want to help us and vote along, that would be great. And we've actually been chosen as one of the three products to represent Canada at the Ciel d'Or Awards in uh, Paris. So right now, our products are heading to Paris on the world tour by Ciel. When the fellow uh, contacted us, George, I actually thought it, he wasn't for real. I thought that, you know, who, who is this person? I, I'm not in the food industry. Who is this guy? Turns out he's one of the biggest grocery gurus in Canada, and it is for real, and we're representing the country. So that's kind of exciting. But in all this, I showed you that nice slide that was pretty, pretty, you know, calm and relaxed. Well, this is, this is my life still right now. It's pretty chaotic. There is a lot going on. I'm running a company now that is launching across Canada and now into the U.S., there is so much happening, and I've got to have an oversee of every single part. So it's really changed our lives. My husband, had, who was the doctor who used to come home and everything was organized, has now become Mr. Mom. And Mommy has to travel, so Daddy has to cook and clean and help. And it's, it's been a challenge. We're best friends, but it's been a big, 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 big challenge. That's the whoopsie. That's my husband over there, Steve. And... Um, Josh and David. So this is me, pretty much, juggling every single thing in the world. I, but I insist on driving my kids to school every day, picking them up from school every day. I'm usually absolutely panicked, and I am saying, got to get off the phone, it's 3.15, I got to get off the phone, I can't talk on the phone, it's my kids, I'm picking them, my kids up. And my kids have unfortunately had to listen to me on the phone a lot. But you know what people have said to me, you know what, they're learning about what hard work is, and that you got to be committed to something. It is hard, but I think they're learning something from it. So when I, just, when I launched this business, as I said, it had to be meaningful. And there's three values that I think have come out really, really strong for me over the last, say, year and a half that I've really been going for it. And, and really came into, um, into kind of a deeper perspective when I was in Quebec a few year, weeks ago, uh, actually a few months ago, doing our first large production run. So in Victoria, we can make a few thousand a day. In Quebec, we're working with a Quebec family, and we can produce between 60 and 100,000 pop, tea pops a day. So we were out there for our first run, and it, there was challenge after challenge after challenge. And it, anyway, I got, was very stressed out, called my husband, cried on the phone, asked him, what am I doing? Why am I sacrificing my life? It's two weeks away from my kids, from you. This is my birthday. I'm sitting here in a hotel room by myself. I lost it. And it was a big, huge you know, kind of cry out. The next morning, we, I woke up, kind of had a catharsis feeling, exhaustion, turned on the TV, which I hadn't done in two years, and the hospital for sick kids came on where I trained. And I watched the story of little kids fighting cancer, and I remembered why I'm doing this. And that's a part of what we, what we do now is give back to sick kids. So the three things that really came, came to light for me are, first of all, ingredients. No refined sugar, no coloring, no flavoring, no, no, no artificial anything from the earth ingredients. And even a child should be able to turn over our box and understand every single ingredient. And I'm challenging people out there to turn over what you buy and read every ingredient because you should understand every single one. And we support local farming, so we buy local as much as we humanly can. Obviously, mangoes is one thing we can't, and that's why I'm going to talk to Stacy about that. Organic farming, nothing, nothing we put in our products has a, a, any, any pesticide. Every product is tested for heavy metals, for, uh, for, for pesticides, herbicides. Everything is tested before it's uh, put into our ingredients. And we're a big supporter of the non-GMO project. So the second thing is values of my company. I, I had to be able to teach my kids something. So a big part of what we do is... Is, is for me to show my kids how you build an ethical company. And for me, building an ethical company meant that we have a comfortable life. Well, we, we did before the third mortgage went on, but <laughs> we have a comfortable life, and it wasn't about 
me, our, us making ourselves more comfortable. It was about me teaching my kids something. So I decided that if we're going to do this, we're going to give back. And we've chosen three different charities, one on a local level, Power to Be. I don't know if any of you know Power to Be. It's a wonderful charity, taking families and, and, and teenagers, children, people in need and struggling out back into nature to reconnect with themselves, with their family, with nature, with friends. And we've been supporting Power to Be actually for a number of years with our clinic as well. 1% for the Planet is a group um, of businesses that are committed to creating a healthier planet. So 1% of our gross earnings, not our net earnings, but our gross earnings goes to 1% for the planet. And the hospital for sick children. And that's been a more recent addition. And again, that's a place where I studied. It's a place where I was able to tell people about exposure to things during pregnancy. I also worked in oncology. I watched a little boy take his last breath there on his mother's arm. So it's a place that for me is really, really, really important. And the third idea that has come to me as well is that I feel like scientists are in their own little conventions. We talk about the research we find and little papers. We might get a little publication here or there in the newspaper. But typically, we're, it's pretty small. Well, people like large industries that are, are making, uh, using GMO seeds. I won't mention names, but they spend billions of dollars educating the public on why GMOs are actually OK. Well, I'd like to be that voice to say, actually, you know what, they're not okay, and here's the science. And so part of my passion is to get out there and give a voice to science, talk to people, dare people to, to turn their box over, read what you're eating, know what you're eating, know what a GMO is. And so I've been able to talk now in the last number of months about all those things, organic versus non-organic. I mentioned I was going to talk about that in tea. You can imagine when tea is, is grown, and like, like Stacy was showing when, when, when it's sprayed, it's, it's picked, it's fermented, it's never washed. It's almost never washed. It's the first time that tea hits hot water is in your teacup. So you can imagine the level of pesticides is incredibly high. In fact, so in some cases they've tested um, very, very, very big companies that you'd be surprised at, tested the levels, and they're actually above what is acceptable in North America. So tea is one of the ingredients that you might want to think twice on when you're looking at an organic versus a non-organic tea. And again, giving a voice to science, probably each of you, because you're here, you know what GMOs are. Does anybody not know what a GMO is? I thought this would be a crowd that might know GMOs. <laughs> and how do we know that a product actually doesn't contain GMOs? You know, if, it, if, it, if you don't have the non-GMO verified project stamp on there, there is absolutely no way that you know that that's been verified. When we were verified, all of our ingredients are 100% organic. When we were certified through the non-GMO project, it was harder than becoming organic, even though we were already organic. They looked at our spec sheets. They looked at the chemical analysis. It's very significant. And, you know, one thing I found out in this, we had organic honey, and we discovered that it's, not, it's one of the products that it can be organic, but it's actually not non-GMO because they can't prove where the bees have flown. So you can't technically buy non-GMO honey in North America, according to the non-GMO project. So we bring on our honey from Brazil and Israel, where they don't allow any GMOs. And again, t these are things that I'm hoping to talk about as, as we grow and as we expand our company. Learning what the difference is be between organic and non-GMO. Do many of you know the differences between organic and non-GMO? There are significant differences between those. So, for example, it is always better, of course, to, to buy organic, and as a second best bet, non-GMO is great. But in non-GMO non foods, they can still use chemical or synthetic fertilizers or pesticides, unfortunately. Antibiotic, antibiotics or synthetic hormones can be used. And it's not actually regulated by the government, although the non-GMO project does a very good job. But again, something can say non-GMO on the front and you have to be cautious. Natural. There's not, nothing natural about the word natural at all. Natural can be a chemical that's put into a, there can be chemicals that put into a product and they can try and label it natural. Luckily, the public is getting a little bit smarter. Naked Juice, which is part of the Pepsi-Cola company, was just sued for $9 million because it turned out they had ingredients in there that were, some of them were derived from formaldehyde. Um, synthetic ingredients, artificial sweeteners, but they were using the word natural. They're no longer using the word natural. 
but there are no regulations per se on that word. Where we've come in two years. So over here, whoopsie. Over here, you can see Marianne and I dropping our first tea into our first steam kettle out of, the kitchen, out of our ki kitchen at home. And our growing DB's team, there's now 12 of us. Last summer, in August, was our first time on the shelf. Got back from New York City, scrambled like crazy to get boxes made. We're on the shelf. First place was actually Aubergine Foods and Demitas. And here we are, official launch of the large batch. Six months later, after we're on the shelves here, we're now out in Quebec making about 60 to 70,000 teapops a day. And unfortunately, you can't see our beautiful teapops here, but this is from two weeks ago. We're on shelves in Sarasota, Florida. So we've just been launched in Whole Foods um, across Canada and in the Midwest all the way up through Florida. So that's pretty exciting. And we are getting notifications that we're being listed by Wegmans, all sorts of people. And we're actually now trying to make sure that we don't get too big too fast and we can keep management of things. And we've brought on a fellow who uh, ran sales and distribution for Nestle head office in Switzerland. And we have educated him on what GMOs are because uh, that's a company that has a different perspective than we do on GMOs. So it's part of our learning processes and teaching processes to educate people, and he's fully converted now. So I think in building the company, it's important to ask yourself why, why you're doing something. And I think the times that I've had struggles and my teams have had struggles, because it's pretty exhausting. We're full on. And when we're working, you know, my team has to remind me to eat lunch, and I have to remind them to eat lunch. It's crazy. But I say to them, you know what, always ask yourself why you're doing this. And in Quebec, that's exactly the question I asked myself. And when I do that, I, I feel a calmness because I remember the why. And for me, it's about giving back, educating people, being a role model, role model for my kids and for other people in, the, in our planet, and passion. So DB's for me has been like my third little baby. I've felt like it's, uh, it's, it's been an exciting process. When you have a baby, a baby can't even hold up its, its own head. You have to support its head, and then it slowly starts to sit up, and you've got to support its back. And then it starts to wobble, and you're holding him up as, as the baby starts to walk. And now I feel like my little baby that I'm going to start to cry about is now going into the world, and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> 